A number of y'all have been asking for uh, some sort of tune-up or maintenance video on the FZ07. parts we were waiting for have arrived. My new stunt sprocket guys are going 25 teeth up in the rear. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm going stock gearing. Stock gearing is really good on this bike. Well, my child is here. I have another baby now. Her name is Savannah. Her and the wife are doing well. I no longer have a child. I have children. I have, I have spread my seed. The brake fluid in here, it's, it's a little dark. It's not terrible or anything. He's two years old though, because whenever we put the steel braided lane, lanes, the steel braided lanes. We'll go ahead and we'll just flush these brakes out. Because I own a compressor, I like to use this tool right here, and if you own a compressor, you should really get one of these tools. Suck all the brake fluid out. Makes it really fast, super easy. Let's start with the front, because that's the slightly harder one, and then we'll do the rear, which is easy. This system has a single brake line that runs all the way down to the left side caliber, and then has a split over to the other side. We'll start with this side, and then we'll go over to the other. If you had one that split from the top down as two, it really wouldn't matter which one you started with. Now my throttle lines go directly over the top of the brake reservoir. Reservoir. Dedicated wham. So I'll have to loosen this up and spin it a little bit just to get it out of the way. Snug it down enough so it doesn't move. Brake fluid is very corrosive, so we want to make sure we don't spill it on anything. Basically put a bib on it. Should probably switch to some gloves on. There's no reason to suck this old fluid all the way through the system as you're trying to uh, flush it out. So we can actually take our little, little head here, stick it right in the fluid. Now we want to be careful pulling too much out of here, uh, just as the same as when we're draining from the bottom. We got to make sure we keep fluid in here because it's really easy to work an air bubble into the system and then you will have to do like a full flush. I always just try to grab a new bottle for every time I do this job. Uh, when these are done, I throw them away because these things will pull moisture out of the air and they go bad. Crack this bleeder open, just a little. See the fluid's going more clear colored now. I don't know how well the camera's picking that up. Just tighten this up. We'll just check real fast to see if there's any bubbles in the system. Pull the lever slowly. Sometimes this thing likes to squirt a little bit, especially when you let go of it. Oh, the brakes feel very firm. No bubbles, so that's good. We can move on to the other side. That means, that's why I love this machine, because it just sucks it so fast, and then you really, it's, it's almost hard for it to get a bubble in it, especially when you're just doing a, um, a flush like this, pulling the old with the new bubble never even gets a chance to get in there. Uh, but I think you guys have also seen plenty of times where I've started putting with new brake lines, and all new brakes and there's air and everything. And this system, it just pulls everything so fast it doesn't care. It's gonna pull all those air bubbles out. This side, since it has a shorter run of brake fluid in it, it should go even faster. All right, brake cleaner and just wipe all around it. Make sure that's nice and cleaned off. Nice and firm, nice and clear fluid in there. Brake reservoir, reservoir, why can't I say that word? Got this fancy little holder for it, which also won't let you fill it. This little cap here, it actually holds the top and bottom, but won't let you take the cap off at all, so. I have a small bubble in it. Sometimes it still gets a little one in there. Crack it open while holding it down. Really? Blew the can out. Brake fluid will slowly eat through these gloves. Yeah, it's kind of a time thing. See, this is these ones are on their second go, so they're done. Cap on. Pedal feels good. Since I already have the air compressor charged up, I'm down here anyway, let's go and check the tires. I don't understand, I left them at a good pressure before the winter. Why would they be at a bad pressure now? Let's talk about our 
video sponsor real fast, Get Roman. Two out of three guys will uh, have some noticeable hair loss by the age of 35. Some guys assume losing their hair is inevitable as they get older. And some completely miss the signs of thinning hair. Remember when I used to have like long hair for a minute there and then I cut it off? It's a little bit of a surprise when I cut it off. But what most guys don't know is there's a FDA approved solutions out there for regrowing hair, stopping hair loss. And that's why we're partnering with Get Roman. Now, they don't just have like some random snake oil they give to everybody. They actually have access to US licensed physicians that you can talk to through the computer over your phone and they're going to get you a personalized plan for you. So you want to go to GetRoman.com slash JakeTheGardenSnake to start your free visit. Get your first month of treatment for free if prescribed by your doctor. You can chat with licensed doctors right from your home or your garage if you're like me. If your doctor decides that this treatment is right for you, Roman's got dedicated pharmacies that will get that out to you in two-day shipping. Starting early treatment is key with these things if you want to stop or prevent hair loss. With Roma, you can find the best approach to help you keep or even regrow the hair on your head. Roma is giving new members a free online visit and a month of treatment for free at GetRoma.com slash Jake the Garden Snake. So be sure to check them out so you don't have to become a hat enthusiast like I am. I'll go and remove this bar in here because I'm going to have to take these off anyway. So now what you do is you get your WD-40 and you, you try to put it in the hole here and no, you can't do that. You should use some sort of cable lube that's meant for a steel line inside of a rubber whatever it is, uh, hose, and you're gonna need a special tool to force that in there. This is just gonna clamp over the line, it's gonna let the hose go through, and it has a little step in there, which when we tighten it up should help seal it on here. If you just tried to clamp that tool on right here, you've got this piece in the way, as well as this is all exposed, the, the oil just come out. So if you take these and you pull them, it should come off. As tight as you make this thing, I've always found that it's going to leak some fluid out. So whenever I squirt it, I'm gonna wrap a rag around this whole thing to try to keep it from going everywhere. Sometimes you'll see it literally spray out, but here I'm getting just a little drizzle of it running down. But that's fine too, you know, that means it's probably a tighter in there and that's better for holding lubrication in the long term and letting other dirt get up in there. I'm gonna move over to the other side now. Oh, what a mess. I'm gonna leave one rag just sitting kinda right here below it because I can see it's just slowly dripping. It probably will for a little bit. It literally feels easy just doing that. Before I put this back together, let's do the clutch side real fast. I like to put just a little dab of this spray right around the tips of these things too. You want a little bit of free play in there of course. Before we put the throttle tube back on, I just want to clean up some of the old oil I put on here. I would use a light bit of brake cleaner to do this, but something happened to the last bottle I have. Yeah, looking a little better in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of silicon grease here and just put a very light amount of grease on the handlebar here. You don't wanna to put too much of this, just a little bit. Too much could actually make problems. You, know, you just want a very light amount. Let's see up here somewhere. Oh, there it is. We're gonna slide this over until I get the bolts in to kind of hold things into place. These grips are definitely wore out. I do love these grippy motocross grips. They're just good. They wear out faster, but I think it's totally worth it. I should have replaced them a while ago. I've got these three safety wires that I put across there. I don't like to glue them. Uh, I think motocross grips are just plenty tight enough on their own, especially with three grips on here. Grips, three ties, I mean, you can you can move it, but you gotta try really hard to twist this thing up. But to remove them, what I like to do is kind of try to open it back up a little. And there you go. Remember to throw these away and don't step on them with your flip-flops, because they will stab your foot. Oh, thank God I found it. I was gonna say we're gonna have to move if I can't. You can try to use an air hose and re 
pop this off almost the way you put it on or you can cut it with a razor and if you can do this you just want to be really careful not to cut into anything else don't slice all the way but do a good slice on it a lot of times you can sort of score it enough that you can get it going I'm gonna put the same pillow tops from Pro Tapper, if I like to call it, Pro Tapper, closed off on the ends, and we are obviously running bar ends. So we're gonna just take a really sharp razor using the little ridges they put on here. We'll use that as a guide and try to cut it off. You know, one of these tubes is actually thinner on the inside and the other one's thicker. They actually end up being the same outer diameter. So what I like to do is get an air compressor, put it in there and wiggle it as you push down on this. And we're going to take this all the way until it touches the end here. Nothing spins on here, so we don't have to make sure there's any like, you know, clearance issues. All right, semi-start it. The beginning is always the hardest because the air just wants to shoot down the entire bar, so you have to really kind of... You know, you can just use hairspray. You can put hairspray in or slip right on. If I can avoid it, I really don't like putting glues and stuff on these things. Especially with these motocross ones, since they're serrated on the side. They, they stick so good anyway, it's not really a problem once they're on. Good. I mean, it's funny, it really won't even move like this. It's so, you could probably just put them on and not put any safety wire on them. I think the throttle one's a little easier because it's a bit thinner. So therefore like, it's willing to like kind of open up more. It's full of air right now. Let's squeeze it out. Now, so we got to make sure that we're not too close to the end on this one or too far over this way. So I've got it kind of right in the middle right now between it because we don't want it rubbing on this throttle housing at all. We don't want to get any drag on there. And at the same time, we don't want it to drag on our bar end at all. Some people will do if they think it's too close because they'll pull their bar end out a little bit and tighten it back down. But that's a stupid idea because if you actually fall on it, it'll knock it in and it'll pin the throttle however you have it when you fall. So <laughs> just make sure there's no clearance issues. We've got no rubbing issues there. Safety wire, gonna wear gloves because safety wire is dangerous. I'll do three, one here, one in the middle, and one on the end. Snip it and not lose the whole thing. I'll have it shoot off like a toenail, so I'm gonna hold my finger on it, because that happens sometimes. I don't have the cool safety wire tools. I never have, I've just never really seen that big of a need for them. I know they are really nice, and one day I'll find the excuse to buy them. It's just easy enough just to grab a pair of little needle nose vice grips like I've got here, clamp them down, and then just kinda Twist them on. The one on the clutch side here, you can definitely make them pretty tight. I mean, you could cut through it. You don't want to do that. But you don't have to worry about like crushing the throttle tube or anything crazy. I like to trim them, leaving like about maybe two or three of the little threads still on there. I find that's enough that they don't come undone. Use a screwdriver here and just kind of bend it up over. Mash that sharp end into the actual grip a little bit. When you're done, you want to take your bare finger and run them over these and make sure that they don't make you bleed, because if you do, well then, <laughs> you gotta try some more. You're not quite there yet. I can't, I can't feel any of those knobs, so that's good. Move to the other side. 